good morning students in the today's lecture we are going to discuss about the life cycle of the albugo okay in the last lecture we have discussed the general characteristic features of the fungi and also the classification of the fungi in today's lecture we are going to discuss the life cycle of the albugo the first of all the systematic position or the classification of the albugo we are here following the classification which is proposed by the alexo paulos and the memes in the 1979 okay the classification of the fungi it is proposed by the uh, large number of the mycologists but as per our syllabus we here following the classification which is proposed by the alexo paulos and the memes in the 1979 okay as per the classification all the fungi these are placed in one kingdom and that is mycetae okay here the systematic position or the classification of the albugo kingdom mycetae division mastigomycota subdivision diplomastigomycotina class umycetes order perennosporales family albuginaceae and the genus is the albugo okay family albuginaceae it is having the single genus and that is albugo okay family albuginaceae it is having only the single genus albugo that is the classification or the systematic position of the albugo kingdom mycetae division mastigomycota subdivision diplomastigomycotina class umycetes and order perennosporales family albuginaceae and the genus is the albugo family albuginaceae it is having only single genus and that is albugo then the here the habit and habitat of the albugo albugo the term albugo it is derived from the latin word the meaning of this uh, latin word it is the white okay albugo the word it is derived from the latin word meaning white color okay Albigo it is represented by about thirty species which are found in most part of the world. It is represented about thirty species of the albigo. These are reported from all over the world. That means the albigo it is distributed all over the world. Of these thirty uh, species, eighteen species of the albigo these are reported from the India. of the 30 species only 18 species these are reported from the india albigo it is a obligate parasite obligate parasites are it is also referred as the endoparasite which is infecting the members of the family which are belonging to the cruciferi compositi convolvulaceae chinopediaceae and amaranthaceae okay albigo it is a obligate parasite which is infecting the plants of the family cruciferi compositi convolvulaceae chinopodiaceae and amaranthaceae some of the common indian species that is these are the uh, albigo bliti then albigo candida albigo evolvi albigo portulaceae albigo platensis albigo trapagonosis these are the some of the common species which are reported from the india of this albigo candida it is the most uh, uh, wide occurrence in india albigo candida it was previously referred as the cystopus candidus okay in uh, previously the albigo it was uh, referred it was called as the cystopus and the cystopus candida it is having the wide occurrence in india this cystopus candidus or we can say the albigo candida it is the most common parasite which is infecting the plants which are belonging to the family cruciferi that means this uh, albigo candida it is infecting the radish then turnip cabbage mustard okay this um, albigo candida it is the parasite and it is infecting the members of the family cruciferi for example it is infecting the radish then turnip cabbage mustard okay then the symptoms of the algae 
symptoms of the sorry symptoms of the albigo that is albigo when it is attacking the certain plant there are certain type of the symptoms by this uh, observing the symptom that is we can clearly say that is uh, this uh, particular plant it is infected by the albigo albigo it mainly infects the aerial parts of the plant okay for example it is infecting the petioles then leaves stems flowers and the roots okay albigo it mainly infects the aerial parts of the plant body like the petioles then leaves stems flowers and the fruits the earlier symptoms that is these are the formation of the rust like white shiny irregular pustules on the lower surface of the leaves okay and these pustules then spread on the upper surface of the leaves and also on the stems okay that means the earlier symptoms that is these are in the form of the white irregular pustules on the lower surface of the leaves and these pustules then spread on the upper surface of the leaves and also on the stems in the latter stages what happens that is these large irregular erupted pustules that is the host epidermis is ruptured and the white powdery mass comes outside okay in the latter stages these pustules that is they get ruptured then ultimately the host epidermis is get ruptured and the white mass it comes outside and it is spread on the leaves or it may spread on the stems and as this is the white colored powdery mass that's why the disease which is called caused by the albigo that disease is called as the white rust disease okay in the latter stages what happen the pustules which are formed on the leaves or the stems these pustules get ruptured the host epidermis get ruptured and ultimately the white powdery mass spread on the leaves and the stem and as this is the white powdery mass the disease caused by the albigo it is called as the white rust disease okay then in certain cases it uh, uh, may causes the hypertrophy okay the infected part of the host it becomes abnormal and in the form of hypertrophy or the fleshiness or the distortion okay the infected part it may become fleshy and the distortion of that particular plant part may takes place okay for example the leaves whenever these are get infected with the albigo they will become thick and they will become fleshy okay they will become flesh thick and uh, fleshy hypertrophy means what that is the swell, uh, swelling on that particular plant organ that is we called it as a hypertrophy hypertrophy that is the swelling which is caused by the disease the infected leaves that is they will become thick and the fleshy and while the stem it will get malformed even the floral parts that is these are malformed beyond the recognition okay the here you can see in this photograph this is the hypertrophied flower okay that is the flower that is uh, it, it get mal formed so that even we cannot recognize the flower in the plant okay uh, mal formed means what that is uh, the different floral worlds like the sepals petals then stamens carpels that is these are converted into the thick fleshy structures okay different floral worlds like the sepals petals then stamens and the carpels they get converted into the thick fleshy structures and thus the infected flower ultimately becomes sterile okay the infected flower ultimately become sterile even in this one here you can see the hypertrophied stem hypertrophy means that is the swelling or the increase in size okay here this is the hypertrophied same it is malformed here you can see that is the hypertrophied flower that is it is malformed beyond recognition we cannot recognize the flower 
uh, in the plant which is infected by the albigo. Here you can see that is the leaf of the raffanus sativus. That is the radish. Here you can see that is the small irregular pustules are present. These pustules get ruptured and then ultimately the white mass it is spread on the leaves. Okay, here you can see the white pustules. Okay, and as these are white colored, the disease which is caused by the albigo, it is referred as the white rust disease. Okay, these are the different symptoms of the albigo. Even in some of the plant, for example, in the ipomia species, that is which is infected by the uh, albigo ipomia pandurini. Here you can see there are certain type of the aggregation of small galls. That is these are developed on the stems. These are developed mainly due to the infection of the albigo species. Okay, these are the different symptoms of the albigo. Then here the next one that is the vegetative structure of the albigo. Vegetative structure of the albigo here you can see that is this is the mycelium. Okay, the mycelium. Okay, here you can see this is the thread like structure that is the mycelium of here you can see this is the mycelium of the albigo. The mycelium of the albigo it is well branched then it is a septet. A septet means the large number of the nuclei are present but these are not having the any partition wall. Okay, there is a complete absence of the septa. And that's why the mycelium of the albigo, it is said to be the aseptate and there it is also referred as the sinocytic. Okay, there is a complete absence of the septa or the partition wall and a large number of the nuclei are present and such a mycelium, it is referred as the aseptate and the sinocytic. Okay, then here the hypal wall. Hypal wall, it is made up of chitin. Okay, hypal wall, it is a made up of chitin the cytoplasm is a granular then large number of the nuclei are present then vacuoles are also present in the hyphae then the food material it is stored in the form of glycogen and the oil globules okay the hypal wall it is made up of chitin cytoplasm is granular large number of the nuclei are scattered then the vacuoles are also present in the hyphae and the food material it is stored in the form of oil globules and the glycogen. Here you can see in this photograph the glycogen bodies here and the oil drops. Okay, the food material it is stored in the form of oil droplets and the glycogen bodies. Then there is a presence of the uh, here you can see that is uh, the uh, uh, mycelium that is it is developing the specialized uh, structure specialized uh, structure quite called as the hostorium okay typically here you can see the mycelium it is present in the intercellular spaces okay these are present in the intercellular spaces of the host tissue okay the mycelium here you can see these are the two cells and in between the two cells the mycelium of the albigo it is present the mycelium of oligo it grow in the intercellular spaces of the host tissue and it absorbs the food material with the help of the small knob like structure and that a small knob like structure is called as the hostorium okay here you can see that is this is the mycelium of the albigo and it is absorbing the food material from the host cells by the formation of a knob like structure here also you can see this is the knob like structure and this particular knob like structure it is called as the hostorium what is the function of the hostorium that is to absorb the food material from the host cell Okay, here this is the magnified view of the hostorium. Here you can clearly see that that is the hostorium. It is well differentiated into the two region. Here it is the knob-like region. It is the head of the hostorium. Okay, it is differentiated into the knob-like head region and the slender stalk-like portion. Okay, it is the slender stalk-like uh, portion or it is the slender neck which is called as the stock of the hostorium. 
okay hostoria it is differentiated into the knob like head and the slender neck like stalk okay here in this one you can see clearly the system of unit membrane the system of unit membrane and the tubules these are developed from the plasma membrane towards the cytoplasm okay and these the system of unit membranes are referred as the lomasomes okay here these are the system of unit membranes and the tubules which are developed from the plasma membrane towards the cytoplasm and these the system of unit membranes are referred as the lomasomes okay these are referred as the lomasomes here in the head region you can see the abundant amount of cytoplasm is present cytoplasm is very dense in the head region and this head region it is packed with the different types of the cell organelles like the there is a presence of the mitochondria then the large number of the ribosomes are also scattered then endoplasmic reticulum is present then the lipid inclusions that is these are also present in the head region okay but here the nuclei that is these are completely absent okay that is about the the uh, head region then here you can see the base region that is the base region it is surrounded by the collar like sheath okay here you can see that is the uh, basal region it is uh, surrounded by the collar like sheath and these are nothing but the extension of the host cell wall okay these are the extension of the host cell wall okay here the base it is surrounded by the collar like sheath and sheath it is nothing but the extension of the host cell wall okay that is all about the vegetative structure of the mycelium okay mycelium it is a uh, uh, endoparasite why it is called as the endoparasite because it is uh, present in between the spaces of the spin that is these are present in the intercellular spaces and these are developing the certain knob like structures which absorbs the food material from the cells and that knob like structure it is uh, referred as the hostorium the hostorium it is further differentiated into the head uh, knob like structure called as the head then uh, neck like or stalk like structure then uh, the basal region okay that is all about the vegetative structure of the albigo okay then the next one regarding the reproduction in the albigo in the albigo the reproduction it takes place by the two methods the first one it is the asexual reproduction and the another one that is the sexual reproduction okay just we have discussed the systematic position and the classification of albigo and also the vegetative structure of the albigo and now we are going to discuss about the reproduction in the albigo reproduction in the albigo it takes place by the two methods the first one it is the asexual reproduction and the another one it is the sexual reproduction okay here here just we have discussed the vegetative uh, structure this is the mycelium of the uh, albigo that is where the large number of the nuclei are scattered without any partition wall and that's why the mycelium of the uh, mycelium of the albigo it is referred as the aseptate and the cenocytic okay these are referred as the aseptic and the cenocytic and now we are going to discuss the asexual reproduction in the albigo asexual reproduction in the albigo it takes place by the formation of the multinucleate specialized structures which are called as the conidia or these are called as the sporangia or also these are also referred as the zoosporangia okay a sexual reproduction in the albigo it takes place by the formation of the multinucleate structures which are referred as the conidia these are also referred as the sporangia and these are also referred as the zoosporangia okay these are referred as the zoosporangia then how exactly these conidia or the sporangia or zoosporangia are developed 
that is first of all here you can see that is this is the host tissue the first of all that is the mm, uh, uh, albigo mycelium it get established in the host in the intercellular spaces of the host tissue okay here you can see this is these are the host tissue and in between the intercellular spaces the um, albigo mycelium it first of all get completely established completely get established means what the albigo mycelium it accumulate beneath the host epidermis okay suppose that this is the epidermis of the host and beneath the epidermis then the albigo mycelium get accumulated okay then the then there is a formation of a short erect stalk like structure okay then from the albigo hyphae there is a formation of the short thick erect stalk like structure and these stalk like structures are called as the conidiophores okay here you can see the conidiophores okay these are the conidiophores these short erect stalk like structures are called as the conidiophores or these are also referred as the sporangiophores okay the short erect stalk like thick structures these are called as the conidiophores and the sporangiophores okay the apical end of these conidiophores the apical end of these conidiophores these are multinucleate and densely cytoplasmic okay these conidiophores these are multinucleate and these are densely cytoplasmic okay and on these uh, stalk like structure here you can see on these uh, stalk like structure then there is a development of the specialized structures which are called as the conidia okay here you can see there is a formation of a deep constriction it appears below the swollen end okay this is the swollen end of the conidiophore and a deep constriction it will appear at the swollen end of the conidio four that means here there is a formation of a small bird like structure okay and this small bird like structure then further get developed into the conidia or oh, singly it is called as the conidium in this conidium here you can see the uh, nuclei that is they will move into that conidia and that conidium here you can see that is it get separated or um, it is present on the conidio okay at the i am repeating this one that is the there is a formation of a deep constriction which appears just below the swollen end a small bird like structure is developed and into this small bird like structure the large number of the nuclei moves okay and then later on the conidia development takes place conidia these are the spherical structures then here these are multinucleate okay the conidia these are spherical these are multinucleate structures the process it is repeated for the several time and then the large number of the conidia these are developed on the conidio four okay the process is repeated for the several time and then the large number of the conidia these are developed on the conidio fours okay here you can see the conidia these are developed in a chain okay in a chain and generally the development of the conidia it is a basipetal succession basipetal succession means what the conidia which is present at the tip region that will be the uh, older conidia and the conidia which is present uh, at uh, um, uh, just above this conidiophore that means this one uh, this conidia this is the younger conidia okay the conidia it is developed conidia these are developed in the basipetal succession that means the older one it is present at the tip region of the chain while the older while the younger conidia it is a present just above this conidio four okay remember that the development of the conidia it is in the basipetal succession 
and here you can see there is a presence of a intercalary mucilaginous disc okay that means all these conidia that is these are connected with each other with the presence of this intercalary mucilaginous disc and this intercalary here in this one here you can see clearly the uh, conidia in between these conidia there is a presence of the intercalary um, mucilaginous disc and this intercalary mucilaginous disc it is uh, called as the disjunctor okay the conidia these are attached with the, each other with the help of the intercalary mucilaginous disc and this intercalary mucilaginous disc it is called as the disjunctor okay then as the large number of the uh, conidia these are developed they will exert the pressure on the host epidermis okay as there is a formation of the large number of the conidia they will here you can see that is this is the epidermis they will exert the pressure on the epidermis and due to which the host epidermis it get ruptured and all the conidia these are liberated through this ruptured epidermis okay and they will come on the surface or they will come on the surface of leaves or the stems and then as these are white colored then it will appear as the white powdery mass on the surface and therefore the disease which is caused by the albigo it is called as the white rust disease okay that means the white powdery mass which is appearing on the surface of the leaves or the stem these it is nothing but the, these are the white colored conidia which are spreading on the surface of the leaves or the stem okay then here you can see that is these are conidia actually these are just we have discussed that is these are conidia these are multinucleate okay a single conidium it is the single conidium and here you can see that is the large number of the nuclei are present okay these conidia these are smooth these are hyaline these are multinucleate and these are spherical okay conidia these are smooth hyaline multinucleate and spherical then um, then when they come when they spread on the surface of the leaves or the stem then what happens that is here the intercalary mucilaginous disc it will dry up and due to which that is these conidia these completely get separated from each other okay these due to the shrinking and the drying of the disjunctor okay due to the shrinking and the drying of the disjuncture these conidia these are blown by the wind or these are washed by the rain water and thus they will spread in the environment okay when the conidia they will come on the surface of the leaves of the stem due to the shrinking and the drying of the disjuncture all these conidia these are blown by the wind or these are washed by the rain water and that is how they will spread in the outer environment okay then the germination of these conidia it will start after the two to three hours of the dispersal when they will get the suitable substratum okay the germination of the conidia it will be initiated after the two to three hours after the dispersal when when they will get the suitable substratum and whenever they will get the favorable environmental condition like the lower temperature then the moist conditions are available then the uh, conidia that is here it will uh, there is a formation of a number of uninucleate segment here you can see there are number of uninucleate segments are formed okay then each of the uninucleate segment here you can see each of the uninucleate segment then it will get developed into the uh, rainy form or kidney shaped by flagellate juice spore okay they will get developed into the rainy form by flagellate juice spores about eight uh, juice spores 
that is these are developed per conidia okay about eight juice pores are developed per conidia as in the uh, conidia that is the juice pores are developed therefore here the conidia these are also referred as the juice porangia okay as in the conidia the juice pore juice pores are produced therefore the conidia it is also referred as the juice porangia okay here you can see that is these are the biflagellated juice pores okay the biflagellated juice pores that is they will get liberated from the conidia they will get liberated from the juice porangia and they will get liberated into the outer environment here you can see whenever they get um, liberated into the outer environment they will be active for some time then later on they will withdraw their flagella okay here you can see that is this is the juice pore but it is with it has withdrawn is flagella okay these are active for the some time but these juice pores withdraw their flagella and then they insist okay they insist this is the structure of the um, juice pore but this is not having the flagella then they will germinate they will form the germ tube okay they will form the germ tube and with the help of this germ tube this um, uh, juice pore it will uh, penetrate the host epidermis okay it will penetrate the host epidermis with the help of the germ tube and it will develop into the fresh mycelium into the host tissue okay if the conditions are not favorable then it will not germinate that means the favorable environmental conditions are essential for the germination of the juice pores okay if the conditions are not favorable sometimes even the juice pores will not form and the conidia that is they will directly germinate to uh, give rise to the mycelium of the albubo okay that is all about the uh, uh, sexual reproduction in the albubo then here you can see the sexual reproduction sexual reproduction in the albigo it is a oogamous type oogamous type of sexual reproduction it is highly specialized and the advanced type of the sexual reproduction where here you can see the male reproductive organ it is called as the antheridium while the female reproductive organ is called as the ovarian okay sexual reproduction in the albigo it takes place by the oogamous type oogamous it is the specialized type of the sexual reproduction where the male gamete uh, where the male reproductive organ it is called as the antheridium while the female reproductive organ is called as the oogonium generally these uh, reproductive organs these are formed towards the end of the growing season of the host okay these are developed towards the end of the growing season of the host and these are developed in the intercellular spaces of the host tissue okay these sex organ these are developed in the intercellular spaces of the host tissue externally we can easily identify the uh, development of these sex organs because the development of the sex organ it is externally indicated by the hypertrophy hypertrophy and the deformation of the organ hypertrophy means the swelling okay the swelling on the host tissue we can see and we can identify that is there is a formation of the sex organs inside the host tissue and these uh, in this photograph you can see that is uh, the antheridium and the ugonium these are developed side by side these are developed side by side the so first of all how exactly the ugonium is developed okay here the apex of the uh, hyphae the apex of the branch it swells here you can see the swelling of the female branch okay then this uh, female branch it will appear as a globular because there is a uh, accumulation of the abundant uh, cytoplasm and the large number of the nuclei okay this appears 
this apex of this female branch it will get separated by the formation of a transverse septum okay later on there is a development of a transverse septum and this uh, structure this globular structure it is separated from the um, hyphae okay here you can see the nuclei which are present inside this uh, female branch they will undergo the large number of the mitotic divisions here you can see there is a formation of a large number of the nuclei that is about 100 to 300 nuclei these are produced within the young pubonium okay here 100 to 300 nuclei these are developed within the ugonium here the uh, ugonium it is uh, uh, uniformly vacuolated and nuclei these are evenly distributed at maturity what happens the protoplast it get differentiated into the two regions okay at maturity here you can see that is these nuclei these are evenly distributed and it is uh, uniformly vacuolated then what happens here you can see there is a uh, development of the two regions within the ugonium that is the outer region and this is the inner region okay that is it is at maturity the protoplast it get differentiated into the outer more vacuolated periplasm okay this is the outer region which is called as the periplasm and the uh, inner region inner region which is having the dense cytoplasm it is referred as the ooplasm okay at maturity the ugonium it get differentiated into the outer more vacuolated region called as the periplasm and the inner dense inner region which is having the dense cytoplasm it is called as the ooplasm okay it is called as the ooplasm and these two regions Periplasm and ooplasm, these are separated from each other by the presence of the plasma membrane. Here, the ooplasm, it represents the fertile region. Okay, it represents the fertile region. The nuclei which are present, uh, ooplasm, it represents the female functional gamete. That is, we generally refer it as a egg. Okay, initially in the ooplasm, there are large number of the nuclei but here that is uh, uh, all the nuclei except one all these nuclei will move into the periplasm and then this uh, ooplasm it is having only one nuclei which is functioning as the egg okay what happens all the nuclei that is the ooplasm it is having the large number of the nuclei but all the nuclei but only one that is it is they get migrated into the periplasm and the ooplasm it is only having the one only one nuclei which is acting as a female functional gamete called as the egg okay that is all about the structure of the ugonium then the structure of the anthridium structure of anthridium here you can see this is the male branch okay that is it is elongated it is a club shaped structure then it is multinucleate okay anthridium here you can see this is the elongated this is the club shaped structure and it is multinucleate then it is developed on the specialized hyphae which is called as the male hyphae or it is called as the male branch generally this anthridium it is developed very close to the female reproductive organ ugonium okay anthridium it is developed very close to the ugonium okay then here at the tip region of the male branch the cytoplasm get accumulated then the large number of the nuclei are get accumulating in this tip region and then later on there is a formation of a transverse septum which is uh, uh, separating this uh, tip region from the male hyphae and this uh, tip region then it will function as the male reproductive organ which is we call it as a anthridium okay generally in the uh, this tip region there is a presence about 6 to 12 nuclei in the young uh, anthridium about 6 to 12 nuclei are present but these nuclei will divide mitotically and then the mature anthridium it will have the large number of the nuclei okay 
that is all about the anthony dm then the fertilization process then how exactly the fertilization process it occurred here the uh, plasmogamy or the fertilization it is occur, occurring by the method of the gametangial contact gametangial contact means what here the young oogonium and the anthridium that is they grow side by side okay that is these are uh, growing side by side and here the fertilization process or we can say the plasmogamy it is uh, 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 it occurs as the gametangial contact where that is the point of attachment here the point of the attachment it is uh, thin the point of attachment is the wall becomes thin and the anthridium anthridium it is developing the small tube like structure that tube like structure it is called as the fertilization tube and this tube like structure it will penetrate the periplasm and then this fertilization tube reaches the ooplasm okay the plasmogamy it takes place by the gametangial contact the point of attachment it is very thin the anthridium it will develop a tube like structure that is called as the fertilization tube that fertilization tube penetrate the periplasm it reaches the ooplasm and then it will forms the mass of cytoplasm which is called as the cenocentrum okay which is called as the cenocentrum then after reaching the fertilization tube up to the ooplasm what happened this fertilization tube will burst okay the fertilization tube will burst and ultimately all the male nuclei which are present in the uh, anthridium these are released into the ooplasm okay the fertilization tube get busted releasing all the male nuclei into the ooplasm okay releasing all the male nuclei into the ooplasm and later on this the fertilization will process will takes place that means the male nuclei and the female nuclei that is the egg that is it will get fused with each other and then there will be the formation of the um, diploid structure and that a formation of the diploid structure it is a called as the oospore okay it is called as the oospore the diploid structure it is called as the oospore oospore it is well protected by the two layers that is the outer thick layer is called as the exine and the inner thin layer is called as the intine okay oospore that is the diploid structure which is well protected surrounded by the outer layer which is thick called as the exine and the inner layer which is thin which is called as the intine then here that is the diploid nuclei which is uh, uh, present in the oospore it will undergo the first of all the meiotic division okay it will uh, undergo the meiotic division the formation of the four haploid nuclei will take place and ultimately the um, these uh, 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 four haploid nuclei will take place and these four haploid nuclei then uh, undergo the mitotic divisions and then there is a development of the large number of the haploid nuclei inside the oospore okay then what happens that is uh, uh, the germination of these oospore takes place that is here you can see the large number of the um, uh zoospores these are developed uh, uh, inside the uh, that uh, particular oospore okay that is the here you can see the uninucleate biflagellate zoospores are developed inside the oospore okay it is a multinucleate structure it will get divided into the several uninucleate segment and each of the uninucleate segment here then get developed into the uninucleate biflagellate zoospores okay now that oospore it is having the large number of the uninucleate biflagellate zoospores then what happens the enzyme of that oospore will ruptured and the enzyme of the that oospore it will come outside as a sac like structure or it is forming the vesicle like structure and into this in time that is all these zoospore will get migrated 
okay the exine get ruptured the entine it will protruded outside the oospore and all the zoospore will move into that vesicle like structure then what happens the dissolution of the wall of the vesicle takes place and ultimately the all the zoospores are liberated into the outer environment then these zoospores they will um, after some time that is they will withdraw their flagella and then they will get insisted here you can see the deflagellated zoospores these are deflagellated zoospores whenever they get the favorable environmental conditions they will develop the germ tube and this germ tube will enter into the host tissue through the stomata which are present in the host epidermis and ultimately this mycelium will get established into the uh, into the intercellular spaces of the host tissue okay that is all about the sexual reproduction in the albumin then here you can see the life cycle of the albigo. Thus here you can see the life cycle of the albigo. This is the mycelium of the albigo. Here the asexual reproduction which is takes place by the formation of the conidia or the sporangia which is functioning as the zoosporangia within which the biflagellated uninucleate zoospores are formed. These zoospores then further get germinate and then there will be the formation of the albigo mycelium in the host tissue okay then here the sexual reproduction you can see the male reproductive organ is called as the anthridium female reproductive organ is called as the ugonium here in the anthridia the male nuclei are present and in the ugonium the um, uh, female functional gamete called as the egg is present which is also referred as the oospear then the fertilization process get accomplished and there will be the formation of the diploid structure which is called as the oospore then in the oospore, the nuclei, the diploid nuclei, it undergo the meiotic division and later on it will undergo the mitotic divisions. There will be the formation of the large number of the haploid nuclei. Each of the haploid nuclei then further get developed into the um, uninucleate haploid zoospores. And these zoospores, these are liberated from the oospores and they will germinate and then they will further get developed into the albigo mycelium. That is how the uh, sexual reproduction and asexual reproduction in the albigo takes place. And that is all about the life cycle pattern of the albigo.